So hello, everyone. Welcome to our latest virtual bridge session. Um, and today I'm joined, oh, well, rejoined by the National Library of Scotland, but this time in the guise of Liz MacDonald. And, and we were excited by the previous session. I have to say, we learned a lot. Your colleague took us through 3D maps. I was very impressed and had to go away and play. And <laughs> I, I, I had so many things to do that day. And I ended up just looking through old maps of Japan online. It was just yeah, <laughs> a rabbit hole. What can I say? <laughs> so, so distract me more. Tell me all the other good things available from the National Library of Scotland, Liz. So over to you for the session. Okay. Well, thank you very much for inviting me. Right, okay. So, hello everyone, and welcome to this session from the National Library of Scotland on online resources for everyone. I'll start with a little background to the library, focus on the huge range of digital resources we have made available, and how we can, they can benefit your teaching and study needs, as well as leisure interests. Most of these resources are easily accessible from home and free to use. I'll show how to access them, contact us with an inquiry and demonstrate key features of the website and then end with the Q&A session. The library's origins go back to 1689 with the founding of the Faculty of Advocates Library. In 1710, it was given the right to claim a copy of every book published in the British Isles with the Legal Deposit Act. The advocates reading room used today is shown in this image. By the early 20th century, the advocates couldn't cope with the scale of the collections and passed these to the National Library of Scotland, which was created by Act of Parliament in 1925. The National Library of Scotland is the largest library in Scotland and one of five legal deposit libraries in the UK. In 2013, legal deposit was expanded to include electronic publications. Here you can see the main building on George IV Bridge, Edinburgh, which was opened in 1956 and where printed and electronic material is consulted. We have another building in Edinburgh at Cosway Side, which houses the maps reading room, which you can see on the left. And in September 2016, opened an access centre at Kelvin Hall in Glasgow. At Kelvin Hall, you can access our moving image and sound collections, and also consult all of our online resources. An image of the workstations at Kelvin Hall is on the right. We hold over 30 million items. As we are a legal deposit library, we don't get rid of anything. Collections include 25,000 newspapers and magazines, 2.5 million maps, and over 100,000 collections of manuscripts. We aim to have a third of our material available digitally by 2025, which will increase what readers can consult from the comfort of home, office, or place of study. The range of our material is vast, so there is bound to be something relevant to your studies or leisure interests. Far more people use the library online now with 6 million visitors in comparison to the 100,000 who come through our doors annually. The library spends a significant amount of money each year on subscriptions to online journals and eBooks. We're also keen to invest in new digital resources to support college audiences. We are digitizing material from our own collections and making this available online, as well as developing new online learning resources. I'll speak about each of these in turn. Our digital resources cover a wide range of subjects, fashion, building, business, computing, environment, construction, and legal studies, to name just a few. The digital gallery is material we've digitised from our own collections and can be accessed by anyone anywhere in the world. You don't need to join the library. Here are some examples, including Robert Burns, his life, 
Work and Legacy, the Scottish Science Hall of Fame, a tribute to 10 great Scottish scientists, Soviet posters, 70 posters relating to the Russian Civil War and economic and social issues. E-resources are online journals and e-books which the library pays a subscription for. These include business resources such as Cobra, D&B Hoover's and Factiva, newspapers such as the Scotsman Digital Archive, as well as journals and e-books, including Cambridge Books Online, Dawson e-books, e-book Central, Oxford Reference and Science Direct books. Access is available in our buildings in Edinburgh and Glasgow. The majority are also freely accessible from home, provided you have joined the library and have a residential address in Scotland. Only 18 out of the total of 128 e-resources are not available from home if you are affiliated to a college or university, and a few have to be consulted on the premises. This is because of license restrictions imposed by the publishers. Password protected e-resources can be accessed from home when you're logged into your library account and again have the Scottish residential address. I've chosen four to highlight. Access UK and Scotland newspapers, full text content of local and regional newspapers, British Standards Online, an online standards library with access to over 90,000 British, adopted European and international standards, particularly useful for practical courses run by colleges. Fashion Studies Online, content from the archives of video fashion with nearly 40 years of worldwide fashion shows and designer profiles, a fascinating archive for art and design students. And JSTOR, access to over 2,600 academic journals across the humanities, sciences and social sciences, plus more than 6,500 open access ebooks. This product is especially popular with students for assignments. On-site only e-resources are only accessible on the library premises in Edinburgh or Glasgow. The Archives of Sexuality and Gender, 20 collections from 1940 to 2014. Fame, a detailed business database with information on over 11 million UK and Irish companies, helpful for business courses, or if you need to research a company before attending an interview. Mintel, a full text UK market research database containing consumer research and sales data, ideal for business courses and writing business plans. The Legal Deposit Map Portal allows you to search modern ordnance survey maps of Britain from 1998 to the present. As well as the e-resources mentioned here, there are plenty more, so please explore the collections. The MAPS website has over 200,000 high resolution images of maps. These mainly cover Scotland, but also increasingly the rest of the UK and abroad, and they date back to the 1500s. They're useful to anyone studying or teaching geography, environment, agriculture, land use, local history, and much more. The maps can be accessed anywhere without joining the library. My colleague Lara, the maps reading room manager, did a presentation to the College Development Network on the MAPS service in January 2021, which you may wish to review. The Moving Image Archive has over 2000 clips and full length films to enable you explore 100 years of Scotland's history, captured by amateur and professional filmmakers. This will be of interest for film and media studies but also social, family and local history. Many can be viewed from home without the need to join the library, but some must be viewed on site at the Kelvin Hall in Glasgow. 
The Learning Zone is a school resource which could have interest to college audiences too. Again, it's available online without needing to join. It's divided into various subject areas, such as literature and language, English, Gaelic, Scots and modern languages, science and technology. Scotland scientists made some of the most important discoveries that help us understand the world and invented some of the technologies we rely on today. History, from Mary Queen of Scots' last letter, written six hours before her execution, to photographs of the First World War, learn about the history of Scotland and the wider world. Politics and society, use House of Commons parliamentary papers and other publications to discover resources which support learning about citizenship, politics and society. Library search is the main way of finding our material. It brings together details of the printed and digital collections. You'll find the search box on the home page of the website as shown here. We have grouped together four different categories of material in an area of library search called collection discovery to make it easier to locate resources. You've got ebook titles with 850 ebooks, Scottish electronic publications from Scottish governmental organisations, charities, local history societies, etc. Transatlantic slave trade a selection of printed and digital resources relating to the slave trade. The Moving Image Archive Online, films from the Moving Image Archive to view online in full or in part. The collection discovery area will grow as we gather more categories together. So please revisit to see what has been added. Images from the collections can be used in assignments. We offer a range of copying services from photographic quality prints to high resolution digital images. A copy inquiry form is on the website to enable you make a request and pay online. The permission pages of our website provide information on copyright and data protection to support reuse of materials. Most of our digitized collections are openly available for reuse. So what are the benefits of using the National Library of Scotland? It is a wonderful resource, often described as a treasure trove. Access is free. Many of the digital resources are available without even joining the library. And once you do join, most of the e-resources are available from home or place of study, provided you are resident in Scotland. The range of subjects ensures there will be material suitable for all college courses, including research and assignments. We provide an online inquiry and chat service, and once we reopen, we'll deal with phone calls and inquiries made in person again. We offer events and reader workshops. We held one recently on climate change. All are available online via Zoom at the moment, but under normal circumstances, we hold these in Edinburgh and Glasgow. You can request and pay online for digital images. And when we reopen, we will provide a photocopy service again. Although our physical sites are closed for the moment, the staff are busy working from home and are ready to answer your inquiries. You can go online and chat with a member of staff Monday to Friday, 10 a.m. till 4 p.m. Email us at inquiries at nls.uk or complete the ask a question form on the website. We were open from late summer to Christmas last year on an appointment basis, except for Kelvin Hall, which was still walk in. Once restrictions ease, it's likely we'll be back to the appointment system. So keep an eye on the website for up to date information. I'll end this part of the presentation with an image of the contact page of the library's website. Then we'll go online to show you how to find the various resources I have described. That's excellent, Liz. So um, 
do you want to take a couple of questions or would you like to just go online first? Um, I don't really mind. I'll bring up the website so that we're ready, but I'm happy to take questions as well. If anyone has a question for Liz, just about the first part of what we've seen. Um, hi, Liz. I've got a question. Um, it's Joy. Um, it was just about, maybe a bit involved, but it was about your um, sort of ebooks and e resources. Because um, we've been noticing quite an increase in the costs of ebooks during the pandemic. Um, and I was just wondering what sort of criteria do you use to determine what's purchased? Ah, that's a very good question. Um, it's not actually my responsibility as I'm not the budget holder, but we have, the library has a budget for purchasing um, ebooks, well, purchasing items from abroad as well, because copyright covers uh, British publications, but anything from abroad, even in print, we would have to purchase. Um, our colleagues work very hard to negotiate good um, deals with the publishers and particularly are trying to um, influence this by explaining that it, we are providing access to material uh, across Scotland with these e-resources. So it is important to get as good deals as possible. Um, so I would encourage you to have, have a good exploration of the website. Um, once, once I do the demo, I'll show you how to get onto the e-resources. Uh, there's a huge amount of material available there. That's great, thank you. Okay. Anyone else have a question or shall I? Uh... I think we'll just continue because we have a we have about eight, eight, nine minutes left. Okay, right. Well, okay, so hopefully you can now see the um, library's website. Kenji, can you confirm that? Yep, I can see it. Right, okay. So this is the home page of the website. Um, and I'm just going to move my name from there. Um, across the top, we have got the different tabs to guide you through the website. The most important thing at the moment is that we're closed um, until further notice. Uh, and this notice is prominent across the website. So keep an eye on it. Hopefully we'll be able to uh, change that soon and update it with details of opening. Uh, the library search box is here where you can search for uh, authors, titles by keyword and so on. And that searches across all our catalogues, databases and digital collections. The join button is here. And this is if you want to join the library, uh, which you will need to do to access the e-resources, not any of the others, but the e-resources in particular. So you click on join, you get an online form to fill in with your personal details, including your address and your educational affiliation, which is important for us. Uh, and then you click the submit button. You will be sent an email with a link to a password, which you can then change to one that, that you will remember. Uh, and you, you will then use that to log in the next time. If you do want to come and visit us in person, once we're reopened, you click on, you need to bring some means of identity vacation with you. So on the website here, we've got a list of what we accept, evidence of ID and evidence of current residential address. So you've now joined the library and you want to log in to look at the resources. Again, it's the login button here. You need to click it twice to get to the login screen and you put in your email address and the password that you created. If you've forgotten your password, no problem. You can click on your forgotten password link. And now I'm going up to digital resources. And these are all the different digital resources that I described in the presentation. This is where you find them. So this is a very important, it's the, the one next to using the library, important tab to be aware of. And here is the digital gallery. Reminder, these are items from our own collections that are available to anyone anywhere in the world. You can show them an A to Z order, just to get an idea of the variety of things. There are over 120 different uh, subjects covered here. Uh, you may find it more useful to search them by category. 
and we've got various different categories. I'm going to go down to photography and you can see here the First World War photographs, Isabella Bird's travel photographs, Scottish bridges. These are very interesting photographs about the building of the fourth road bridge and the Tay Bridge after its collapse. Now we're going to go on to the e-resources themselves. Reminder, these are the ones that you do have to log in for and gives you a little bit of information about them. And if you've forgotten to register in, or join the library in advance, you can do so from here as well. Gives you the link to the, the registration form. You can browse by title if you know what you're looking for. The alphabetical list gives you the title of the item a little bit of description of what it covers, publisher and the coverage. And this one is from 1954 onwards. And the important thing is the access link. So you just click on the link and you'll be able to get straight into it, provided you've registered with the library and have a residential address in Scotland. So you can do this from home, from college, um, from office or whatever. We can also Rise by subject area. Uh, these are the various categories. You can see there are quite a number of categories. History, biography, and genealogy is a very big one. Uh, reference works is large and business. Well, let's look at the reference works because these could be useful for you. There's where the British standards are. Uh, there's a complete dictionary of scientific biography, credo reference and so on. So lots of, of information there. Now we're going to go and look back to the digital resources and click on map images. You can find by place or there are various categories down here. I'm going to go look at county maps and Aberdeenshire. And you can see that our earliest map from Aberdeenshire goes back to 1583 and the most recent is up to 1961. But we're going to look at counties of Aberdeen from 1930. I chose this because it's a nice and colorful one and you can zoom in. If you double click, you can zoom in again. So you get quite detail. And reminder, there's a very good presentation from Lara um, concentrating on maps, which was done in January. So we're going to go back to the homepage, digital resources, and this time we're going to the moving image catalogue. This is from the moving image archive based in Glasgow. Uh, and each week we have a special theme. Uh, this week it's home and away. It's about um, employment across Scotland. You can search and browse by clicking here, put your search term in, use various filters to refine your search. And since we're all remote at the moment, I would recommend you click on available remotely. That way you will definitely get films that you can access uh, at home. Uh, some will be black and white, some will be color, some have sound, some have not. So there's a huge variety there. Next, we're going to the learning zone. This is the one available primarily for schools, but I think it's worth mentioning because college audience could find it useful as well. We look at history. And you can see various things, plague in Scotland, food history, women's suffrage. The food history one I thought would be worth mentioning because it talks about food and cooking methods from the early 17th century right up to the present day. And food obviously is a very important industry in Scotland. We will go back. Um, perhaps you want to do some exploration. Let's look at geography and you can see we've got mapping history, Scott's last expedition and information about David Livingstone plus lots of other ones. So do have a look around. Uh, now, once you've done all this, research, you may find something you want to use for your assignment or your essay. So we will 
sorry, we will go down to this black area at the bottom, which has got very useful information. And we're going to look at copying services. And this tells you about the different kinds of photocopies and images we can provide. And on the right hand side, there's information about how you reuse the material. Which obviously is important. We want to have as much of the material accessible as possible to people for reuse for, for essays. Um, we don't charge permission fees, we just charge for the photocopying or the digital image. Uh, so finally, we're going to go to the contact page. And this is where you need to be to ask us a question or once we're open to phone us. So click on ask a question online and you get presented with another form, details of what you want to ask. And during opening hours of 10 until four Monday to Friday, you can also um, send us a chat. All we need to do is your email address and your question. And we've got three librarians covering chat each day. Um, so we're very keen to get questions this way. They, they need to be quick um, questions. If we're having to consult the collections, obviously that's not something we can do, the printed collections from home. But uh, we can do a, a lot of other uh, research and provide pointers to people. Um, I'm going to go back to the contact page again and also want to show you about our events. We're running lots of online events and you can see various ones that are forthcoming. Well, that's been but the various other ones. And ones that we've had in the past have been recorded. So if you've missed something, you can still catch up with it. So it's worth looking at these. We also do workshops and tomorrow we'll be doing a maps workshop, maps for family and local history. I think that's fully booked, but we do them each month. So if you want to, to attend book next month, we do family history and discovering your library on your online library. And this is a useful one. It's uh, library socials. It's a journey through the moving image archive and it's specially geared up for people affected by dementia, plus their families, carers and supporters. Um, there's a lot of very interesting film in the Moving Image Archive. So I think that could be useful for some people. Uh, so let's go. I'll leave this on the contact page and just say that I hope this has been useful for you, giving you introduction to the wide range of digital resources we have available. Um, we're happy to do talks for individual colleges or do something similar again for you. And uh, please uh, do get in touch with us if you've got any questions. I'm going to stop sharing now and I'll come back and see you all. That's that's great, Liz. And and like a professional, you have finished pretty much on time for the recorded portion of this session. <laughs> so we, we are going to continue the conversation here. And I, I, I'd just like to say, like looking through some of the resources that you took us through, that whirlwind tour, you know, yeah. I, I'm surprised that my, my, my vision of the library, my mistaken vision is that you carried a lot of content, but it was primarily quite old or dated content. But I see a lot of really relevant and current resources and materials that you have there. You cover such a breadth. Oh, yeah. so there's, I, I feel you're right when you say there's something there for everyone and it's definitely worth the investigation. So we shall carry on the conversation here. But for those of you joining us uh, on YouTube, I apologize <laughs> that you can't stay with us, but I, I, I sincerely only have enough time in the day to edit 30 minutes of video. So <laughs> thanks for joining us now. Um, thanks again, Liz, for sharing this with us. And uh, hopefully um, we could see you all at a following live session. But until then, stay safe.